Okay, in this video we're going to uh, do a really common problem, which is to find the volume of a box. Um, and we're doing this before we learn calculus. When you learn calculus, you learn a slightly different way to solve it. Um, so here's what we're talking about. Uh, we end up with this box. Um, and this box has a width, um, it has a length, and it's also going to have a height. And so overall, the volume of the box is going to be the product of those three things. So the volume is going to be the width times the length times the height. Um, but this particular problem involves having a, a sheet. Uh, it's either usually a piece of cardboard or a sheet metal, uh, like a rectangular piece of metal. And so there we go. And what we do is we cut out squares from the corners. So they have to be squares, which means you're going to cut out something that has the same, same sides. So there's a square, square, square. We're going to cut those out, and then we're going to fold it up, and we're going to turn this into the box. And usually the box doesn't have um, a lid or a top to it, so it's an open box. Um, so when we make our cuts, um, they are x by x. So that means that all of these are going to be x by x. And so uh, after cutting those out, we're left with these. Um, and that's actually going to be the width, right? So the distance uh, along the top, I'm calling that the width. And then these are going to be the lengths. And then the height is actually just going to be x when we fold it all up. So let's look at the typical problem. So a typical problem would say a 20 by 14 inch piece of metal has, um, a rectangular piece of metal, has squares cut from the corners and is then folded to create an open box. We want to find the maximum volume of this box. So I'm going to start by uh, kind of drawing the 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 rectangular piece of metal. So there we go, and we have our X's cut out. So it's the same picture pretty much every time, so you want to definitely get used to drawing it. Now, uh, it's 20 inches by 14 inches, so let's say the longer thing is 20, which makes sense. So there's 20, but if that's 20, and then we cut X and X off of it, which you can see in the picture is what's going to happen, then um, our width is actually going to end up 20 minus 2X, and then we have our other dimension is 14, so let's say 14 here, if we cut off x and x from that, then we're going to get a length that's 14 minus 2x right there. Um, and then when we fold it up, so let's look at the actual box. So here's our box. Uh, we're going to have, this is 20 minus 2x, so that's our width. Our length is 14 minus 2x. You can actually avoid a really common problem by just drawing the box. Really common problem is that people only use two of the three dimensions. They forget that when we fold it up, the height is actually x. So if that's the case, then our volume overall is going to be the product of those three dimensions. So 20 minus 2x times 14 minus 2x, and then times x. And that gives us our volume, but there's a kind of sticky issue, I guess. Um, if you think about it, just from a common sense standpoint, obviously x has to be greater than 0, otherwise uh, you're kind of like adding, I guess. When you cut a negative from it, you would make the rectangle bigger, maybe. So x definitely has to be greater than 0. And also, if you look at the two dimensions, um, the two other dimensions, the width and the length, so 20 minus 2x, if x is um, greater than 10, that dimension becomes negative, which just means you can't really make a cut that's greater than 10. Um, similarly, 14 minus 2x, if x be is bigger than 7, you would have a big problem. So greater than 7 causes a problem, greater than 10 causes a problem. So overall, really anything bigger than 7 causes a problem. So really the x that we're looking for is going to be between 0 and 7. So that's our volume formula. And now what we do is we basically turn on our calculator. So um, since I'm handwriting this video, I've got some screenshots of what I did. So uh, first thing I did was I stored the function. So I did v of x and then I did colon equals. And I did 20 minus 2x times 14 minus 2x and then times x. And then I punched in v of 0 and v of 7 just to kind of confirm that it was working the way I thought it was. And I get a zero volume for both of those, which makes sense, because if you make a cut of uh, zero or a cut of seven, you're, you're essentially causing one of the dimensions to be zero. Um, so the next thing I did was I created a graph page, and I had to fix up the window. So creating the graph page, um, since I know that x has to be between zero and seven, I made the x min negative one and the x max eight. Um, I always go a little to the left of the minimum and a little to the right of the maximum, just so that I can see the whole picture. Um, so I have that, and then what I did from there was I, I changed the y values, so negative 10, because I know it's not going to be a negative volume, and I just made the maximum 400, because I don't really know what's going to happen here. Um, it turned out that 400 worked. If it didn't work, I just would have made it bigger. 
Um, and then finally I graphed. So here's a graph of V of X. And you can see that there's that maximum point, 2.70394 comma 339.013. So remember, this function takes X, which is the amount you're going to cut, the size of the cut you're making. Um, so it takes that, it plugs it in, and it tells you the volume. So the maximum volume I'm ever going to get is 339.013. So I would then just write up my answer. So I want to make cuts that are 2.704 inches. I usually round to three decimal places unless it specifies otherwise. And then the maximum volume is going to be 339.013 cubic inches. Um, and that's how I would always go about solving this problem. It's a very common problem. You're definitely going to have to solve it at some point. And I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.